Hello everyone, welcome to Real Life Media, where we look at the real life stories that inspire the films and music you love. My name is Jose, and today we're going to look at one of my all-time favorite movies, Taxi Driver. Directed by Martin Scorsese and released in 1976, Taxi Driver is a twisted tale of Travis Bickle's Ascent into Madness. Played by a young and handsome Robert De Niro, fresh out of his Oscar win for The Godfather Part II, it is regarded by many critics as one of, if not the best character studies in film history. I advise, if you haven't yet, please watch the film as we will be doing a brief breakdown of the narrative. Travis is a troubled ex-marine who dissociates himself from society. Plagued with insomnia, he decides to take on a late night cabbie job in New York City, which is a bit of a problem because he is disgusted by the nightlife of New York and which he calls the filth of the city. Fun fact, Taxi Driver was filmed in New York during the garbage strike of 1975, so the city was indeed filthy, meaning Scorsese's team didn't have to do much set design for the street shots. One day, he meets the woman of his dreams, Betsy played by Sybil Shepard. Betsy works at the campaign office for presidential candidate Charles Palantine. It is here that we see the first normal interaction Travis have and at first things are looking great. Bessie seems to change his perspective on society, which is masterfully shown by the change in lighting when he first sees her. They go out for lunch and she even accepts an invitation for a second date. But of course, Travis being socially inept takes her to a porno flick on their second date, which makes her uncomfortable and understandably she walks out on him and ignores phone calls and returns flowers he sends. He bursts into the campaign office yelling at Betsy that she is just like the rest of them, causing Travis to revert back to his life of alienation and disgust for society. In between, he meets Iris, a 12-year-old prostitute under the control of Sport, her pimp, played by Jodie Foster and Harvey Cattell respectively. One night, an upset Iris enters a cab and tells Travis to drive her away, only to be stopped and taken away by Sport. He tosses Travis a crinkled $20 bill and tells him to forget what he had just seen, which only adds to the hatred festering in him. After another chance encounter with Iris, he starts becoming obsessed with her. He tries to save Iris from a life of prostitution, but she is reluctant to leave it all behind. Travis decides he is finally going to do something to clean up the city. Fueled by hatred and perhaps Betsy's rejections, he plans an assassination attempt on Charles Palantine. He buys some guns, works on his health, and scouts Palantine's campaign rallies. Once he is ready to make his move, he sends some money by mail to Iris hoping for her to use to get back home to her parents, possibly since he knows he will most likely not be making it out alive. While sporting the best mohawk in film history, he attempts the assassination on Palantine, but fails after being spotted by one of the Secret Service men. He then decides the next best thing to do would be taking out Iris's pimp sport so that he may personally set her free, which he does in probably one of the most realistic and gruesome gunfights I've seen. He succeeds in killing sport and two others but sustains a lot of injuries himself. Finished, he attempts to shoot himself but is unable due to him being out of ammo. As the cops come in, we get this cool shot of Travis. Now, some people say this was the end of Travis and the rest is something he imagined before his death. However, we're gonna say he survived and ironically deemed a hero. He even receives a letter from Iris's parents thanking him for freeing Iris and helping her get home. Travis recovers from his injuries and goes back to his life as a lonely taxi driver. And for the most part, that is the story. There are some things we left out for the sake of time, so I will recommend you check out the film. Written by screenwriter Paul Schrader, he states the film had many influences, one being the story of Arthur Brimmer. Brimmer was born in August 21, 1950 to a working class parents in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, raised in a dysfunctional household, even stating in a diary he kept, I would escape my ugly reality by pretending that I was living with the television family and there was no yelling at home or no one to hit me. He was a loner and didn't make much friends in high school. His only known friend was Thomas Newman, who committed suicide in the game of Russian Roulette in 1971. In October that same year, Brimmer moved out of his parents' home and moved near Marquette University. On the night of November 18th, Brimmer was arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. A court-appointed psychiatrist declared him mentally ill, although still able to continue to live in the community and released on a $38.50 fine. On January 13th, 1972, Brimmer bought a snub-nosed Charter Arms 38 caliber revolver, and on March 1st, he wrote the following in his diary. It is my personal plan to assassinate by pistol either Richard Nixon or George Wallace. I intend to shoot one or the other while he attends a campaign rally for the Wisconsin primary. On April 10th, he traveled from Milwaukee to Ottawa. Three days later, at one of the campaign rallies, he initiated an attempt to shoot Nixon, but due to security, he was unable. An upset, Brimmer returned to Milwaukee giving up on Nixon and began to hatch his plan to assassinate presidential candidate George Wallace. He read up on the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy, and on May 9, 1972, he made a trip to the Wallace campaign headquarters in Silver Lake, Michigan, and offered to volunteer for Wallace. He began attending rallies regularly, and on May 13th, police received a phone call of a suspicious-looking Brimmer sitting in a car near National Armory. 
questioned by the police, he stated he was just waiting for the rally that day and wanted to get a good seat. That evening, he was photographed at the rally where he had a chance at Wallace. But in his diary, he said he didn't take the shot because he didn't want to blind two stupid 15-year-olds standing in front of him. Running out of money, he knew he had to make his move soon, which he did on May 15th, 1972. Wearing dark glasses dressed in red, white, and blue, he attended two rallies that day. At the second rally in Laurel, Maryland, in a crowd of about 1,000 attendants, he pushed his way to the front of the crowd, and at approximately 4 p.m., he opened fire with his 38 caliber, hitting Wallace four times in the abdomen and chest. Wallace survived the shooting, but one of the bullets hit his spinal cord, permanently paralyzing him. Bremer was wrestled to the ground and taken to the Baltimore County Jail, where he would await his trial. And this time, a chief psychiatrist studied Bremer and said he had schizoid personality disorder, with some paranoid and psychopathic features, but also stated this didn't substantially impair his capacity to understand the criminality of his actions. Bremer was sentenced to 63 years in prison, but released after only 35 years on November 9, 2007 on probation. So this was the main inspiration for Travis's actions in the film. In a 1976 interview, writer Paul Schrader also stated this about what influenced the film. Before I sat down to write Taxi Driver, I reread Sartre's Nausea because I saw the script as an attempt to take on the European existential hero and put him in an American context. In so doing, you find that he becomes more ignorant, ignorant of the nature of his problems. Travis's problem is the same as the existential hero, that is, should I exist? But Travis doesn't understand that this is his problem, so he forces it elsewhere. In that same interview, he goes on to explain an event that inspired Iris. Schrader met a girl at a bar in New York City one night. They went back to his hotel and there he realized she was an under drug addicted hooker. That following morning, Scorsese met them for breakfast and Iris's character was rewritten from her. Her name was Garth Avery and she actually cameoed as Iris's friend in the film. Taxi Driver went on to be a classic and shows up on a lot of people's top 10 films list. As always, I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel for more content and comment down below on what film or song you would like to see us discuss next and we will see you next time.